Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Quantity webinar. My name is Nick, and I'll be doing the presentation with you today. Just like all of our previous webinars, everybody will be on mute. So if you do happen to have any questions at any point during the presentation, please feel free to go ahead and type that into the questions area. And at the end of the class, I'll go through and I'll answer any questions that may have come up. Also, at the end of the class, I will be sending out an email that will contain a document that covers everything that we're going to be talking about in today's class. Should you happen to have any questions while going through that document, please don't hesitate. Contact our support department. They'll be happy to help you out with any questions you may have. Again, today's class is on quantities. And what we're going to be basically going over today is we're going to be taking a look at how quantities are created in Envisioneer. So every element in Envisioneer has quantity information in its properties, such as the price, the supplier, a part number, and units. This information is used when a project estimate or quote is to be generated. In today's class, we're going to learn how to define the quantity information for elements, select and edit a report template, and then generate an estimate. So first, let's talk about looking at the, uh, sorry, let's talk about specifying quantity information uh, for your elements. So before starting a model, it is a great idea to open up your catalog and specify the quantity information for elements that you intend to use in your design. Information such as the price, the supplier, the part number, and the units for pricing. The more fields that you fill out uh, on an element's quantity property page, the more information you will see reported in your estimates and your quotes. You can provide even more detail by specifying assemblies for each element and specifying formulas for quantifying those assemblies. Assemblies are parts that are linked to an element but are not visible in the actual drawing. When you specify quantity information for elements in the catalog, that information is permanently saved in the catalog. So you only have to do and perform this task once. So let's take a look at how to specify pricing and other data. So in the elements properties quantity page, we're going to find some various fields that you can fill out to define the elements quantity information in detail. I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna select file catalogs and I'm going to select the element manager option. Under the element manager option, I'm just going to go in and I'm going to select doors once the catalog opens up here. If I scroll up to the top of my catalog tree, I can see all the elements on the left hand side and I'm just going to open up the doors folder by clicking on the plus sign and this will open up all the doors that are available to me. I'm just going to grab one of the interior doors here. So I'm just going to minimize these entry doors. I'm just going to grab an interior door. And we're just going to grab the 32 inch hinge door. When I select that, I can see all the different tabs for that particular door. So how that door is created, what the leaf is supposed to look like, and so on. We're going to focus on just the quantity tab. So we're going to click on the quantity tab. And on this quantity page, we're going to see some information that we can adjust. So the first thing that we're going to see under the quantity section, so right here, we're going to see manufacturer. So this is going to be the manufacturer of the product. You can click the browse button next to the option to select a manufacturer that is already added to the catalog or you can create your own by selecting edit and adding a manufacturer. Again, this is only relevant if you want to show the manufacturer in your quantity reports. The supplier can be the actual supplier that you're going to be purchasing this door from. So again, you can type in the supplier's name and again, this will just be a section that will show up in your reports when you are seeing where you're getting that uh, product from. In Envisioneer, when we look at price, everything in Envisioneer is set to $0. The program ships worldwide, so we can't really add a price in here because prices range um, and change differently per region. So we keep everything at zero. 
And depending on how you're going to be doing your quantity information, you can also leave yours at zero and have your pricing calculated in a different way, or which we'll look at in a little bit, or you can actually type in the price that you want for that specific door. And then if the price changes, you just come back into the catalog and adjust the price accordingly. Underneath price, we have phase. So materials are often shipped to the building site in phases, such as your site work, your foundations, or your framing phases. The selection here indicates the phase this particular element is associated with and when it's going to be delivered on site. You can again click the little browse button beside phase and you can choose from all the different phase options. We give you a predefined list here, but you can add to this or edit any of the phases that are already created for you. Underneath phase, we're going to have category. So elements can be grouped into categories according to their type, such as sheathing or pre-cut lumber. Again, you can click the browse button to again change the category. And again, we give you a default list of all the different categories available. And again, you can adjust these or add to it as needed. Underneath category is division. So this is a construction division identification. In North America, we use the CSI divisions. Uh, and again, these are just going to be a numerical um, code based on the CSI divisions um, that we are taking advantage of. The part number is next, and this is kind of an important one, especially if you're going to be exporting out your uh, reports to link up with a point of sale system. You will want to make sure that your part numbers match up with whatever your point of sale system is using for that specific element. So if in your point of sale system, a 32 inch hinge door has a unique part number, you would want to make sure that that part number matches in here as to what it does in your point of sale system. This way, when you take the information from Envisioneer and you bring it into your point of sale, it will automatically see that part number and associate the correct price with the part number. So again, part number is important. You want to make sure that that number is again matching up with your point of sale system if that is the route you're taking to get your quantities. If you're di just doing quantities and estimates from within Envisioneer and you're going to be adding in your own pricing, then you're going to want to make sure your part numbers again are unique within Envisioneer. Underneath part number, you're going to see alt code. So this is the alternate code. It is an extra identification code that can be used as a formula that ties the phase and the usage together for increased organization in a list. We have already created a alt code for you and it's already predefined for all elements in the catalog. But again, you can customize this alt code if you feel you need to do that. Underneath alt code, we have usage. So an element's usage can help make it more clear what that specific element is for. As an example, one particular member could be used for your basement beams, while another might be used for your studs. You can again click on the browse button beside usage to open up the different usages available to you. And again, you can go through and add to this or edit them as needed. Just a quick note for the framing members, the usage can also be set in the framing options for greater flexibility. So if I was to open up a wall, I could go into the actual framing configuration and assign a specific member that has a specific usage already created. Underneath that, we have units of measure. So the unit of measure is going to be associated with the element. Examples of units of measure are going to be each, roll, and package. Again, you can click on the Browse button beside the unit of measure option and choose from a list of all the different unit of measure uh, options that are available to you. Just going to click Cancel on that. Depending on the element that you are using, you will have an option to apply a mark and this is just a mark that's going to show up with the element once it's inserted. Uh, things like doors, windows, 
columns. You could apply a mark to them so that they show up with the appropriate uh, designation as to what you want to see when that element is inserted. Underneath mark, we have include and quantities. You want to make sure that the include and quantities checkbox is enabled. You would disable this option in a remodel project if the object represented an existing element that you didn't want to quantify. So ideally, everything that you insert right now is in a new construction, so you want it to quantify. So you're going to want to make sure that you have the include and quantities selected. Underneath the include and quantities, we have a replace with assemblies. The replace with assemblies option enables the assembly elements to quantify, but the main element will not be uh, added in. So what I want to see here is I want to see the door, but I also want to see the assemblies. So I'm going to make sure that include in quantities is selected, and I'm going to make sure that replace with assemblies is unselected. The assemblies will automatically be inserted as well as the door itself. So in my reports, I'm going to see a 32 inch hinge door, six panel, and then I'm going to see the subsequent assemblies that are attached to that door. This way I'll see how many doors are inserted and then all of the assemblies are also going to be included. An example of when you would have uh, replaced with assemblies selected is going to be under a wall. So if I was to select a two by six cement board siding wall and I went to the quantities page, I would have replace with assemblies selected. The reason for this is I can't physically go to a lumber yard or to a construction yard and buy a two by six cement board wall. So I don't want that two by six cement board wall to show up in my quantities. I want the assemblies that make up that wall to show up in my quantity reports. So this is where replace with assemblies would come into advantage for you. And you would want to make sure that that option is selected. I'm just going to go back up to uh, our door that we were working on. And now we're going to be looking at specifying assemblies. So on the right side of the quantity page, you will see an assemblies area. Assemblies are again going to be parts or materials that are associated with an element, but are not drawn in the model. For example, doors can have hardware assemblies such as a hinge set and a door lock associated with them. Walls can have assemblies that include drywall sheets, screws, and paint. Assemblies are going to include, sorry, assemblies are included for each element in the project estimate provided an assembly option is selected on the elements quantities property page. <clears throat> so again, in our element manager, when we are taking a look at our door, we can see on the right hand side we have assemblies. I'm just going to select the interior door hinge set, and I'm going to click on Edit. Once I click on Edit, it's going to bring up the Assembly dialog box. And in this Assembly dialog box, it's going to show me different assemblies that I can apply. So here I can see hardware trim and garage doors. Under Hardware, I have a standard entry door. I have a double entry door. I have an interior door lock set, a bifold door lock set, and a double door lock set. Each of these are going to have different uh, parts assigned to them. So if I click on the interior door lock set and I just double click on it, this is going to bring up the edit assembly dialog. And in here I can see the parts that are associated with that particular assembly. So in this case, when I'm adding in an interior door lock set, I'm going to see the interior door hinge set and the interior lock set. If I click on the interior lock set and I click on the browse button, I can go through and I can apply different hardware for that particular assembly. So again, I can further refine exactly how I want the doors to be calculating as well as their hardware. So I'm going to click Cancel on that. And as you can see, we also have the option to add and remove 
different um, assemblies. So if I wanted to add in another assembly, uh, maybe I wanted a door stopper on here for each door, I can include a door stopper um, on this assembly as well. Or maybe I want to remove the lock set because I don't want this door to lock. I can simply remove the lock set from the door and it will only calculate the interior door hinge set. So again, you can further refine exactly how you want these assemblies uh, to be represented. In the calculated quantity area, in here you can define a formula for how you want these to be reported. So ideally right now we're working with a door and we're gonna want at least the door to count and show us how many uh, lock sets we're going to need for each door. And in this case, we would just do a count and that's however many doors are added in, that's how many lock sets we're going to need. An example of this where we would make a change is maybe I can only buy one hinge set, but I want three hinges on each door. So instead of being a hinge set, I would just have this as interior door hinge, and then I would do count times three. And I would go into the formula, and I would just go in and say times three, and then it would show me for every door added in, I need to have three hinges also included. So depending on what you're buying, how you want that to be reported, you can adjust the formulas accordingly. I'm just gonna click cancel to all of this. I don't wanna make any changes in that catalog for anything that I've done. And then the next thing we're gonna be looking at is specifying formula. So a little bit more of a complex formula is what we're gonna be looking at next. So formulas are the key to quantifying materials accurately in your estimates and your quotes. Formulas can be very simple or more complex depending on the material you are quantifying and how you want to quantify it. The specified formula dialog contains a complete selection of formula components that you can use to build virtually any formula. So let's say you want to add a fence to your design and you want to report the number of rails, posts, and boards that will be used. To achieve this, you would need to create a formula for each of these assembly items that includes various, uh, sorry, includes variables for the spacing of the posts, the overall length of the fence, and a rounding factor in case the overall length includes a decimal portion. So in the element manager, we're gonna again open up the fence options. So I'm just gonna go down to fences. And underneath privacy fence, I'm gonna select the four foot standard wood fence. In the properties panel on the right, I'm gonna select the quantity tab. And under the quantity tab, we're going to see that we have a formula already added in. And in here, we can see that we have the uh, fence rail. So the actual uh, fence rail itself is going to be added in here. We also have the fence posts. So how many posts are we going to need? And then we're also going to have the fence boards. So those are going to be the actual boards that we're gonna be using on our fence. Each one of these has a calculated assembly already applied to it. So we're gonna go up and we're gonna select the one by six fence option and we're gonna select the edit assembly. And this is again gonna bring up our assembly dialog. And in the assembly dialog, we're going to see the assembly itself. And we're gonna double click on the one by six fence, uh, one side, no spacing. And in here, we're going to be able to edit this assembly's formula. So beside the two by four by eight treated, we're gonna click on the little browse button here. And we're gonna see in the calculated quantities area, and we're going to see the actual formula that is being used right now. So right now, this formula is showing length divided by eight times three. To break this formula down, 
we are basically dividing by eight. So the spacing of the post is going to be eight feet and we will be purchasing eight foot rails. So we divide the overall length by eight. We're multiplying by three because we want there to be three rails. So we want three rails to be calculated for each eight foot section of fence. So we multiply that entire equation by three. The length is going to be the total length of fence that we draw in. So let's expand this formula to include a rounding factor to account for a fence length that includes a decimal. We can only purchase whole lengths of lumber, not partial ones. So we're gonna use the trunk function to do this. The trunk function will cut off any decimals in the overall length. Again, this is like a rounding down or rounding up option. And you're gonna place your cursor to the left of the formula. So I'm gonna go all the way to the very beginning and I'm just gonna left click once. Once I've left clicked once, I'm then just going to go over into the function area and I'm just going to click on trunk. This will add in the trunk variable and it will also add in an open bracket. Now we need to go through the formula and make sure we're accounting for everything that's going to be needed. So we need to put what we are truncating between two brackets. So with our cursor, we are then going to click just after the eight and we're going to add in a new closed bracket. A good rule of thumb here is for however many open brackets you have, you should also have the equal number of closed brackets. And since we added in trunk, it automatically created an open bracket. We need to add a closed bracket. You can type the closed bracket in with the keyboard, or again, you can use the uh, function keys on the uh, right hand side to add those in. So right now our formula looks like trunk, open bracket, open bracket, length divided by eight, close bracket, close bracket, times three. Because the overall length will be truncated or rounded down, we need to account for the portion that was truncated. So we're gonna place our cursor to the left of the second last bracket, and we're going to type in plus one. So I'm just gonna go right in between those two brackets. And I'm just gonna go in and type in plus one. So now our formula looks like trunk, open bracket, open bracket, length divided by eight, close bracket, plus one, close bracket, times three. Next, we need to add brackets around the entire equation. You can add these again by double clicking the system brackets in the operation or function list, or you can type them in directly. So again, we wanna go all the way to the beginning and we're going to add in a open bracket to start. And then we're going to go to the end of the plus one and close bracket and we're gonna add in another close bracket. So we want everything inside these brackets to be calculated first. Once that equation is uh, calculated, then we're gonna times it by three. Now let's test our new formula. We will use a fence length of 20 feet. According to our formula, this should give us nine rails. Six rails for the top, sorry, six rails for the two full eight foot sections plus three more rails for the remaining four foot section. If the test formula, in the test formula page on the specified formula dialog, you can click in the length edit box and you can actually type in the length that you want. So here we're gonna go in and we're gonna click on test. Under our test formula, we're gonna scroll down to length and we're gonna type in 20. So we're gonna go in and type in 20. The result is then going to be displayed at the end of the formula. So once I click on there and I click out of that dialog, so it has to accept that value. So you can just left click somewhere or press tab on your keyboard. It will then say, based on that formula, we are getting nine. So our formula is correct. Now that we know that the formula works, we can save it for future use if desired by clicking the save button and then specifying a name and description for it. 
It will be saved in the formula library and you can reload it into any uh, specified formula dialog at any time by clicking the load button. So again, we can just go up here and click save. Uh, okay, sorry, close here first, and then we can click save and say we want to save this formula uh, to use for other elements. We can save it, give it a unique name, and then we can load it in using the load button whenever needed. I'm just gonna cancel out of here because I don't wanna make any changes to my catalog. So I'm just gonna press cancel all the way out, and then I'm just gonna cancel the element manager as well. So the next thing we're going to be looking at is generating a project estimate. So once you have defined the quantity information for elements in your catalog and you have created a model, you can generate a project estimate with the click of a button. So I'm going to drop in some walls really quick here. So I'm just going to grab my cement board panel wall and I'm just going to drop in some walls. Now all I have to do is go up to Tools, Analyze, and then I can select the Generate Project Estimate option. In the Generate Project Estimate dialog box, you can now choose the uh, template that you want to create uh, or you want to use to create your reports. So right now, I'm not using a specific template. It doesn't actually have a name. So I'm going to use the drop down list and I can go through and I can choose any one of these as my report template. If I go through and I check off the quote generator option, you can see that it breaks it down into a different format for me. So in here, I'm seeing it as it would be delivered on site. So I'm seeing the individual phases uh, broken down. If I changed it to just be standard report form, and all I'm gonna see here is, and I'm just gonna make this a bit bigger so we can see it. What you're gonna see here is absolutely everything in a running list. So it's gonna show me everything that's being used and at the bottom, it's going to give me a total cost. In this Generate Project Estimate dialog, you're also going to get a cut list. And in the cut list tab, the cut list quantifies all of your deck members, excluding your deck boards, as well as any members you have inserted with the members tool. And it reports both the actual and the purchased lengths for those members. You can also see in here that we have uh, skipped items. So again, these are going to be items that have been skipped and you'll just see that they are being uh, viewed here. So you know what is actually being used and what's being skipped. Under the quantity report, again, you're going to see the actual members themselves are also being reported in here. So now let's take a look at report templates. So the layout and the content of the estimate are determined by a report template. You can choose different report templates and edit existing templates, pardon me, to suit your needs. So in the generate project estimate dialog, again, we're gonna use the drop down menu here. And again, you can see all of the different templates that are available to you. We were using the standard report form as our default and we saw what it displayed. It ran a running list of everything all in one big list. Makes it kind of hard to see where elements are being used, uh, what elements are being used where. So there are different formats or templates that you can take advantage of. You can select any one of these and then you can use the options of adding in a new template or opening a template or you can edit a template. These will allow you to make adjustments to how the templates are being displayed. If we click the edit template button, this will bring up the report template dialog. And in here, under the general tab, is where you can specify the basic information such as the template name, the report file extension, and how you want to sort the information in the report. You can also prevent specific elements from appearing in your estimate by disabling them in the element filter list on the right hand side. So if you only ever want to show lumber, you don't care about siding material, you don't care about brick or concrete or anything like that, 
you can go through and you can start to fine tune exactly what you want to show in your actual reports. Under the cut list optimization, this page contains settings that pertain specifically to the cut list. So again, if you are using the cut list, you're going to want to make sure you're adjusting this page as well. Uh, and again, you can go through here and specify exactly how you want the cut list to take advantage of certain scenarios. So cutting down long members, cutting one piece from one, uh, sorry, cutting one piece from each purchase length, uh, what your tolerances are, what's your scrap, uh, maximum scrap length, what your saw cut allowance is, all of that can be assigned in here. Under the records tab, the settings on the records page determine how report headers, footers, and element entries appear in a project estimate. Records are made up of the individual fields. So you can edit, add, delete, or copy fields within a record, giving you complete control over how the information is going to be reported. So as you can see here, under our default option, which is what we have as our set, which is our default, we can see that it's being broken down into division, description, quantity, unit, price, cost, usage, and phase. And we can see that that's being broken down right here. So I can see all of these are being included because that is how we have our elements sorted. If I click on headers, or uh, double click on headers, sorry, our main header is showing the quantity report. So it's gonna show us the project estimate, which is what we're seeing here. And then the drawing name, which is gonna be your project name. And that's gonna be what we're seeing here. Under sort level heading two, we're going to see that we are now showing just the location. So right now we're seeing location and then we're seeing our spacer and then our division description quantity and so on. So this is how you can break down how you want things to be displayed. If you want to add additional fields, you can uh, add uh, different header information in here by just adjusting it here. I'm just going to click cancel on that because again, I don't want to make any changes to mine. The next thing we're going to be looking at is generating a quote. So a quote is a list of products with quantities, pricing, and other important information. Quotes are used by building material supply retailers, wholesalers, distributors, and contractors to facilitate the design, sale, and inst installation of construction projects. You can use the Generate Quote tool to instantly generate a quote that opens in Quote Generator. This is a separate software application that opens in an independent window. In Quote Generator, you can manipulate the data to suit your needs, generate a variety of reports, and export the quote to a point of sale system or accounting program. Just a quick note here that the Quote Generator tool is only available in the Envisioneer Construction Suite package. To use the Generate Quote tool, you're going to again go up to Tools, Analyze, and you're going to select the Generate Quote. If this option is grayed out for you, then you do not have Construction Suite, and you'll just have to follow along with what I'm showing you. So we're going to click on Generate Quote. This will again open up the Generate, uh, sorry, this will open up the Quote Generator program. And the first thing we're going to see is a Load Quote dialog. This is essentially saying, I've already worked in Quote Generator a couple of times. So it's saying, do you want to load from the last project or do you want to load from the Envisioneer project that you're currently working on? And I want to load from Envisioneer. I want to take what I'm currently drawing and I want to open that. So I'm going to say yes to load from Envisioneer. The next dialog is essentially giving you a warning. Again, like I mentioned at the start of our class, we keep all of our pricing set to zero. So here it's just basically warning you, hey, you're giving stuff away for free. You're going to maybe want to take a look at that. So we're going to say OK. And then what we're going to see is a, in our quote generator, is a list of all of our elements. And then we're going to see in big and red bold column here, 
we're giving stuff away for free. So depending on how you're using Quote Generator, you can work on this in a couple of different ways. So right now, what we're doing with Quote Generator is we're loading from Envisioneer. So we're taking information from Envisioneer, we're bringing it over, and we're going to be able to uh, either adjust the elements that we want to use here. So I can uh, substitute L of elements out. I can uh, add in pricing if I want to. I can adjust a lot of information from within here. So if I want to change this out, instead of being a, six, a two by six by 12 footer, I can right click and substitute a product. I can uh, add a comment. I can adjust different parts of that specific uh, member because it will find the different elements that I uh, have in Envisioneer because I've linked Quote Generator with Envisioneer. So if I wanted to substitute the product out, um, I can actually just select this here, right click, substitute product, and it will ask me to find what I want this to be. So I can go through and say, well, I'm going to sort it by a SKU number, and I want to change this to be um uh, for whatever reason i'm going to change it to be a two by six by ten so i'm just going to go two six ten and then i'll say okay and it will now substitute that two by six by twelve with a two by six by ten and i'll say yes so it's now changed that for me and i'm now seeing that new value so you can fine tune this in quote generator if that's how you want to go about creating your reports so what I just did was I took advantage of the product database. Now, Quote Generator ships with an empty database that is ready to be populated with your products. If you use a spreadsheet or an accounting package for inventory control, and that program can export your products, uh, product data to a CSV file, you can import that data into the QG database via the CSV file uh, provided that the file has a particular structure. To import a database, you would just simply select Tools, Data, and Import CADSoft Catalog. So you go up to uh, Tools, Data, and then Import CADSoft Catalog. Again, by default, the Envisioneer database is already loaded for you, so it's going to reference back to what we have in Envisioneer, but you can load in your own databases. Once you have populated the QG database with your products, you can then substitute stock items for purchase or for products in the quote via their SKU numbers like we just did. So as long as you have a database loaded, you can substitute items out within that package. In Quote Generator, we also have quote modes. So there are four quote modes in Quote Generator. Each displays a unique information. So when you first generate a quote, the quote is displayed in the product details mode. So right now we're in mode one. If I click on the uh, options here to adjust the modes, I can go in and select mode two. So mode two is going to list the basic product details and displays price controls such as markup, margin, retail pricing, profits, and tax information. If we wanted to change that, we can again select mode three, and mode three is going to be project details. So this is going to list the SKU numbers and descriptions of products so you can export the data that is being listed. The last one is mode four, and it's hardly ever used, but it is there if you ever need it. It is a manufacturing details mode. And this is going to be similar to the admin mode with additional fields for manufacturing information. I'm going to go back up to mode one. And next, I want to talk about reports. So once you have manipulated the data in the quote grid to suit your needs, you can instantly view reports based on the data in the quote and the quote settings. So reports are going to be displayed in the reports window. There are three predefined quotes available. So if I go up and I select tools and I go and I select, uh, sorry, not tools. If I go over and I select the reports option, which is going to be this button right here, it's going to bring up the reports dialog. And in here, I can choose the different reports 
uh, that I want to take advantage of. So the main one is going to be your main quote. Uh, this is going to be the uh, products and subtotals based off of their phases. So here we can see grouped by phase. We also have a poll list, which is essentially going to be products by SKU. And it's usually only based, uh, only used for internal uses only. And then we also have an order summary. So if I click on poll list, sorry, we can see here that we have a couple of different views of how these reports are going to look. So again, this is going to show us absolutely everything, but it's going to be based on the SKUs themselves. If I go back to the quote option, I want you to take note at the header. So here we can see that we're seeing the company logo, the company information, and then we're having uh, options for the actual customer information as well, and we can populate that. When we change to the internal option, we're seeing a banner option instead, and it's just being a text banner. So we're just seeing actual text. The last option is an order summary. And this one here has, again, a different header. And this one is an itemized quote with subtotals and a total price. When viewing a report, you can again filter selected information from the report and specify how you would want or how you would like to group and sort the records. You can also choose to apply taxes if needed. Using the report designer, you can customize the report content, such as the header and footer information, grouping, and the sort order of the products and the report layout, including fonts, margins, and spacing. You can also bring in your own company logo. To do that, we can again just go up here and we can select uh, in here if I wanted to adjust the, uh, the order form one, so the group by phase option, I can see that again it is using an actual logo. So if I wanted to take a look at this, I can go up and I can just select under, I'm just going to close this down under tools. I can then select report designer. And in the report designer, this is how it is being broken down. So in here, we can see that the quote grouped by phase, it's active. So I want to make sure it's in my list of that drop down list. And it's the highest order one. I want it to be the first option in my list. So it's going to be the first one that's being seen. Here it's using a banner. And in that banner, it's going to be using an actual logo. And I can apply what I want that logo to be. I can also include the customer who is being sold to. I can display the individual records. I can include the retail tax and the uh, total taxes. And I can also include the grand total. I have an option to include everything if I want to, so I can just put a check mark in all of this. But again, you can fine tune exactly how you want that to look. If I look at the internal option, this one is text only. So it's only going to show me the text that's in here. And again, same controls. I can control what I want to see by using the click, uh, the uh, selection options here. But just to show you the differences between them, the last one, which was the order summary, I'm using text and a logo. And again, I can supply what I want that logo to be by specifying what is going to be included. Once you have all of this specified, you can go through again and under the report layout, you can adjust what you want to see in each of those reports, how you want to group them. Uh, maybe you want to adjust uh, certain grouping or sorting levels. You can again go through this list and customize exactly how you want them to be displayed. Under the last option is the filters. So again, if you want to filter out certain things so only certain elements show up, you can again use the filter options here to go through and filter out the elements that you will never want to show up in your reports. And again, it'll be saved as that report or in that report template uh, forever until you make adjustments to it. I'm not going to save any of my changes, so I'm just going to click close because I don't want any of that to be saved. The last thing I want to talk about is updating inventory in Quote Generator. 
So like we mentioned, Quote Generator creates a list of all the products that were inserted into the CAD soft model. A CSV file can be maintained in Excel and imported into Quote Generator, so you have an up-to-date list of inventory, which can include pricing. So if you plan on using Envisioneer to do all of your pricing, you can export the catalog out as a CSV file. So if we go back into CAD soft, I'm just going to go close this down. I'm going to go up and I'm going to go File, Catalogs. And under Catalogs, I'm going to go into the Element Manager. In the Element Manager, I'm going to go up to File. And I'm going to select the Export Text File. When I select the Export Text File, it's going to give me the option to save this somewhere on my computer. I want to give it a unique name. So I want to give this a name that I know I'm going to remember. It can be master catalog. It can be whatever you want it to be. Uh, but we want to make sure we change it to be a comma separated values file or a CSV file. Once you do this, you're essentially taking every single element in Envisioneer and you're exporting out to Excel. You are then going to be able to open Excel open that CSV file, and you're going to see every element in Envisioneer in that Excel file. You can then apply pricing to that Excel file and save that Excel file as your uh, database. You would then load that database into QG, and now whenever you bring an element into Envisioneer and you open up Quote Generator, it will now reference that database file and apply that price to the element itself. If prices change, you would open up the Excel file that is your database file, make the adjustments to the prices of the elements that need to be adjusted, save it, and then in Quote Generator, you would need to reload that database so the new pricing is now included. If you're not going to use Envisioneer to do your quantities, you're going to use the um, point of sale systems in Quote Generator, then you would just simply leave all of your pricing as zero in Envisioneer. I'm gonna say cancel that, cancel that. I'm gonna go back up to tools, analyze, generate quote. Uh, yes, load from Envisioneer. Yes, I know my pricing is set to zero but I know that my SKU numbers are correct and they match up with whatever my point of sale system is using. So what this is going to do is it's gonna say, okay, so here's my SKU numbers. Right now they're showing zero pricing, but in my point of sale system, let's say I'm using BizTrack. I have pricing defined for a 2612. So all I need to do is use Quote Generator as a shuttle from Envisioneer to BizTrack. So here I would go up and I would say file, export to point of sale. I would give the pro project a name, say okay. And then I just need to select the destination application. So what format am I using? I'm gonna use the drop down, and I'm gonna select BizTrack. And then I'm gonna say okay. So now what it's doing is it's now taking all of this information that we've created in Envisioneer, all the SKU numbers, which is the important thing, are matching up with what BizTrack has as their SKU numbers. So when this comes over to BizTrack, it's going to see this 2 by 6 12 and it's going to apply the correct pricing to it, as well as all of these other SKU numbers. So depending on how you're going to use Quote Generator, if you're, if you're using Quote Generator, you can again create your own database from within Envisioneer, apply your pricing in that CSV database file, load it up in Quote Generator and all of your pricing will be displayed. Or if you're using Quote Generator as a shuttle between Envisioneer and your point of sale system, you can leave all of your pricing at zero, make sure your SKU numbers match your point of sale system, and then you can simply transfer it over and the pricing will be assigned in your point of sale application. So there was quite a bit of information in today's class. So I'm gonna go through a quick review. I'm gonna open up the question section as well. So again, if you have any questions about anything that we've covered today, please feel free to go ahead and type that in the questions area. And I will go through and answer any questions that may have come up. I'm just gonna cancel here, close this down. All right, so we're gonna go through a basic review. 
So the building information modeling technology in Envisioneer makes it possible to generate accurate estimates and quotes that reflect the way that you do business. Every element in the catalog has a quantity page in its properties where you can specify quantity information such as price, supplier, and part numbers. You can use assemblies to quantify parts and materials that are associated with an element but are not actually drawn in your 3D views. You can use formulas to accurately quantify materials in the manner in which you would purchase them. You can use the project estimate tool to display a bill of materials instantly at any point in the design process. You can apply a variety of templates to your estimates, which are compatible with other software tools. You can add, edit, and delete report templates to, to suit your needs. Templates determine what type of file is created uh, when you save the estimates, as well as the estimates content, organization, and layout. If you have the ability, if you're using Construction Suite, you can use the quote, uh, sorry, the Generate Quote tool to instantly generate a quote that opens in Quote Generator, which is again an independent application. In Quote Generator, you can import a product database, manipulate the quote data, generate a variety of reports, and export the quote to a point of sale system or an accounting program. So again, I'm just going to go through and see if there is any questions. I'm not seeing any questions at the moment. I'm just going to pause just to see if there's any other questions that are going to be coming in. Uh, like I mentioned at the beginning of the class, I will be sending out an email uh, that contains a document that covers everything that we've talked about in today's class. If you happen to be going through that document and you have any questions, again, please don't hesitate. Contact our support department. They'll be happy to help you out with any questions you may have. Perfect. Well, I want to thank everybody for attending today. I do look forward to speaking with you all again very soon. Thank you very much, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your day.